Welcome back, everybody. She is the freshman congresswoman from Massachusetts' 3rd Congressional District. Yes, joining us now is Representative Lori Trahan. Hi. Thanks for coming back. Oh, thank you for having me. We spoke to you last during the campaign, so congratulations. Thank and, you. Uh, thanks for coming back here. We want to dive right into what is happening in Washington. Yes. The president has declared a national emergency at the southern border in order to get the funding for his proposed border wall. And now, the Democrats, the House will introduce a resolution Friday yes. to terminate the president's declaration. This, of course, was a huge campaign issue for him. Sure. And do you plan on voting for the resolution? I am going to vote on the resolution. I mean, it's, uh, it's clear that the president hasn't made the case uh, to lawmakers on, um, on the border wall. Uh, didn't make the case to the Mexican government to pay for the wall. And, uh, and this calling a national emergency is basically circumventing Congress and it's diverting funds from the military and from disaster relief victims uh, to fulfill a campaign promise. So I'm against that precedent. Um, the president, by his own admission, said, I don't need to do this. Uh, and so I think we need to preserve um, states of emergency for real disasters. The president and his supporters argue that Democrats in the past have supported at least some form of barrier mm -hmm. and that this is political posturing to not allow it this time around. What would you say to that? I would say that the process took its course. I mean, we had a bipartisan um, conference uh, with Senate uh, Republicans and Democrats, House Republicans and Democrats. There was a barrier that was funded, um, almost $1.5 billion mm -hmm. to extend that barrier. And, uh, and then other investments need to be made. If we're going to talk about border security, we need to talk about evidence-based solutions. Uh, you know, so much of the, the drugs that are coming into our country are coming in through ports of entry. We don't have the infrastructure that's required there. We lack... 90% of them come in through yes, the ports of Yes, yes, and we lack scanning devices. I mean, we, there was just an interdiction a couple of weeks back of uh, fentanyl. Uh, we need to invest there. We need to invest in technology. I do want to ask you about, uh, it must have been so exciting to attend your first State of the Union address. Yes. And of course, so many women mm -hmm. elected alongside you. You all were white yes. in honor of the suffragettes. And there was some interesting pushback in the aftermath of the images of that night. There was some sort of <laughs> dancing and cheering going on. And, you yeah. know, and some people thought, oh, was it that a little awkward? You know, in retrospect, when you look back at it, were you, were you fine with the way it all came across? Uh, I am. Did you I, enjoy the image? I did. I did. I think... Uh, um, I love that I was sitting uh, with my um, my colleagues together in solidarity, um, and we were there to celebrate. There there had been more women ever um, entering the workforce in this past quarter, and uh, and we we love that, right? We were cheering for that, and we we're also cheering about the fact that we are part of the women who just joined the Congress, and the we're going to women join Congress. Yes, yeah. and we're going to we're going to fight for those women who just joined the workforce to make sure they have uh, paid leave and equal pay for equal work. So affordable daycare. So that, I think, it, it was a celebration of what's possible uh, for this year and also um, that so many women were in the chamber together. You mentioned the guests that you had there, Veronica mm -hmm. and Ivan yeah. Soto. Yes. Ivan Soto is the Lawrence police officer who famously left his own burning home yes. during the Merrimack Valley gas yeah. explosions mm -hmm. to go help other people who were being affected by yeah. the disaster. Is enough being done to help the Merrimack Valley recover from those explosions? No, we still need help. I sat down with small businesses, I mean bodegas, small corner markets, where the calculation on their claims is just unfair, right? It's, it doesn't take into account, it might, you know, it might pay for lost inventory or, you know, two months of lost sales, but it doesn't take into account that they've lost customers. Um, so what, what can be done about that? Is, I, it, is I, it pressuring the insurance companies? Is it more federal money to help them? And what, what can be done? So one, I think, you know, Columbia Gas um, has claims adjusters to help with this problem. I think we have to recast how that calculation is done mm -hmm. to take into account the things that are beyond the spreadsheet. Um, you know, certainly I would encourage anybody to go to these communities and support them. Uh, you know, there's, there has been um, a loss of, of business as a result of just the wear and tear on this community. Last question. Before this interview, you were actually in Methuen yes. for uh, a meeting on the opioid crisis. Yeah. You met with members of law enforcement and health care. And Lawrence, which is in your district, has mm -hmm. had uh, a really big issue with opioid overdoses and addiction. Yeah. What aren't we doing right now that we need to be doing? 
Uh, I think the federal government needs to step up in a very powerful way and take on this public health care crisis. Um, it's, there have been um, some good things that have happened in Massachusetts um, that we can build upon. But what I learned today is that, one, there is still a stigma associated with addiction, and it prevents people from seeking care. It prevents people from making this uh, Ill illness discussable and getting the treatment that they need. So we, we have to change that. Our medical, our health care delivery system is actually not designed uh, to eradicate addiction. And I think that needs to, that needs to change. I mean, we don't look at the recovery as one that's very long, you know, long term. Mm. Uh, and we don't fund it that way. I just joined the uh, freshman bipartisan working group on addiction. And it's because uh, this freshman class is you know, pretty uh, in touch with this crisis as it has played out in each of the districts that we represent. And I'm hoping that we can be a catalyst for uh, progress on this crisis. Well, Representative Lori Trahan, thanks for coming back. Thank thanks you. for speaking with us. We hope you'll come back again. I will. Thank Always you nice so to see much. you. Nice to see you. Appreciate too. it.